Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Mary Kay Irving with Peak Health and Nutrition, and I'm here today starting off my new weekly series, Tips for uh, Nutrition. And so I was going to call it Tuesday Two Minute Tips, but this is going to be longer than two minutes. It's around six minute mark. I'm going to try to keep them short, five minutes, because we're all busy in the morning. Anyway, um, this first segment series that I'm going to be doing is about mental health in particular. It'll probably last about six weeks through the middle of September. And um, we're, I'm ready to get started, so let's jump in. First of all, for those of you who don't know me, I am a nutrition therapist, a speaker, and an integrative health coach with a background of many years as a psychotherapist. So my um, journey into nutrition therapy is a result of my own lifelong struggles with depression and anxiety, which was significantly changed and reversed just by changing my diet and lifestyle. So I'm all about sharing that information with other people. And um, if you are like millions, literally millions of people around the world struggle with mood disorders, depression, and anxiety, um, very likely there is a large component of what you're eating and how you're eating that is contributing to these, these kind of mood swings and irritability and um, low moods. So let's talk about that. If you live in a conventional modern society like the United States, you're probably living a pretty fast-paced, stressed out life where you are eating similar to the standard American diet. We call it SAD, the standard American diet, which consists of either skipping breakfast because you're in a rush to get to work, or get the kids to school, um, or eating a pretty skimpy, but skimpy nutrition-wise, breakfast, which is pretty high sugar, high processed carbohydrates. These, these quick on-the-go breakfasts are also usually pretty low in quality protein, and they're low or non-existent with good fat. And the reality is we all need um, all of the macronutrients. We need carbohydrates, preferably fresh vegetables, not processed carbs as well as good quality sourced protein and good quality um, high fats, good fats. So we need those in every single meal and we're not getting that. So the problem with that is that without protein, and I'm going to switch to my visual aids here if possible. Um, so basically the problem is the standard American diet. We're skipping or we're eating skimpy breakfast that is too high in sugars, low or no fat, and low or no protein. So with low or no low fat and low protein, we don't have the proper um, nutrients for our brain to function properly. Without protein, we don't have the vitamin Bs that are necessary to produce the neurotransmitters such as serotonin that helps us regulate our mood. With low or no fat, every cell in the brain and every cell in the body needs fat, and then the brain is composed primarily of fat. So with low or no fat diets that we've been recommended, um, we've been incorrectly recommended to eat low or no fat, and the government is finally coming around, the media is finally coming around to educating people that good fats are good, eggs are not bad. Um, and then the problem with high sugar and carbs is twofold. One, sugar, the processing of sugar in our body, depletes us of those vitamin Bs. Remember those vitamin Bs that we get in protein that helps us produce neurotransmitters. So we burn through the Bs by eating sugar and then we don't have them for regular healthy brain function. The other problem with the high sugar diet is that it spikes our blood glucose levels. Our blood glucose is um, the form of sugar that it travels through our blood and into our cells that helps us create the energy that we need to breathe and our heart to beat and our muscles to work. So if you look down here at this little roller coaster, the green, fairly straight, slightly waving line is the way our blood sugar is meant to be.